Welcome back to Metropole Business Center. Today we're having a conversation on whether or not freedom of expression for Kenyan creatives exists. And so far we've had such an insightful conversation with Ken Kigundo, who's a communication and PR specialist at Freedom Expression campaign. Now, Ken, before we had a little issue with the connection, I was looking at whether, I wanted to get a conversation on um, whether you are taking legal actions apart from, you know, filing a petition. I just want to get to know if that's the next step for you guys. Yeah, um, for the last eight years, um, uh, what we call the Creative Economic Working Group, it's a consortium of so many other organizations. Organizations, including Dopey Box, including Electra Communication, uh, including uh, Go Down, and so many others, um, almost 20 organizations. Uh, we have been pushing for changes, and what we've done um, also last year from 2017 when Rafiki was banned, we went to court to uh, fight uh, for freedom of expression. Uh, unfortunately, we lost that case this year during this period of Corona. But again, we were not we are not going to stop there because again, we believe that mm -hmm. uh, uh, creative or imaginations and uh, how artists tell their stories should not be capped. And so we uh, are intending to go to the court of appeal to push for freedom of expression and to push for the uh, restriction to be lifted because what it happened for the Rafiki film, it was totally or completely uh, restricted. And um, if I take you a while back uh, when we were young, um, uh, Kenya Broadcasting Communication uh, Corporation, rather KBC, used to bring us a program that was called uh, The Beautiful, uh, The Bold and the Beautiful. And uh, then we were toddlers and very young. And so what used to happen then, uh, it was uh, classified to a certain age, 18. Mm -hmm. And that is the Kenyan uh, adult age. And so when when that, when that you add that um, intro, uh, intro song coming in into your screens, what you do, you just rush into your bedroom because you definitely knew this is time for grown-ups to watch their program. And so the same thing we're asking for Rafiki. Instead of completely restricting it, why don't you classify it to a certain age, to a certain um, age that you can say mm -hmm. um, this film can only be watched by this certain age at these particular hours of, of, of the time, or just like that, just classification instead of just killing such a wonderful film that has been uh, has received so many awards uh, globally and uh, has been accepting elsewhere. It is on DSTV, and in any other country in Africa, you can watch it, including Uganda and Kenya, you cannot, you cannot be able to access it. It has completely been restricted for distribution and everything. And so that's why we are in parliament now. We work together with the government agencies, including Kenya Film Classification Board, mm -hmm. and also Kenya mm -hmm. Film Commission and uh, the Ministry of ICT, and now the Creative Economic Working Group, uh, and we are able to uh, push for an amendment. The bill now is in parliament, the miscellaneous uh, amendment bill, 2020 is in Parliament, and we're hoping that uh, it will be able to bring some change. However, we have some issues in it because there was little consultation uh, between uh, uh, the Creative Economic Working Group and uh, the government agencies. And we saw some, still there are some uh, areas, uh, gray areas in there that, that we should relook and uh, to, be able, to be able to create a freer space uh, for creatives to be able to operate in. Okay, thank you so much for that. Now, earlier on, you had stated that, you know, you know, the same laws that are, were being used back before we were born are being used today. Now, I just wanted to get to know, as creatives, do you feel that the Kenya classification, um, Film Classification Board is stuck in a space where freedom of expression only applies to um, artistic work that appeals to them? Sorry, I, I wasn't able to hear you. Oh, you lost uh, me a second. Oh, I just wanted to get to know that, you know, as creatives, do you feel as if the Kenya Film Classification Board is stuck in a space where freedom of expression only applies to artistic work that appeals to them? And if it doesn't, then it won't apply. Yes, definitely, yes. I think they're stuck <laughs> a little bit behind and they only, uh, it's unfortunately at this particular time that the board is being led by someone who um, is more focused on morals. And again, we all know how difficult it can be to uh, just uh, to define morals because what is good to me is not good to you and what is good to you is not necessarily mm -hmm. good to me. Mm -hmm. And so we really have to peg everything to the laws. If uh, I'm not contravening the set laws, the constitutional, uh, constitutional laws guiding uh, freedom of expression, and if I'm not going against then uh, again, the bill uh, that is films uh, and, act, and state play act, 
then again, I should be allowed to be free to create, to imagine, as long as I'm within the law. But it comes to a point that we've seen we negate from the law, and now we go to feelings, emotions that um, and judge uh, a film within the morals, which again, uh, it's quite unfortunate. And we think we need to move from that. And that's why we are calling for an amendment so that uh, our creatives can be allowed just do their work in the most conducive way, knowing that how it has a huge potential for this uh, country, take it to another uh, level. Because again, why should people be coming to a country and filming? And then these films are on Netflix, these films are on DSTV, and these films are all in these platforms, and they're not restricted, and yet we can watch them and access them here in the country, on you including on YouTube channels. Mm -hmm. But creative work within mm -hmm. the countries, again, is restricted, and people cannot watch their own. And when you go outside the country, it's accepted. So we really need to be in tandem with what is happening in the world. We, we need to be tolerant to each other. We need to accept ideas. We know that for us to grow, and uh, we must be given that space to be able to do our work as creatives and to be able to impact this nation in a different way and contribute to the GDP of this country. So yes, K SCB, they need to relook into the uh, uh, management or into the uh, regulatory issues, and they have to be more supportive, creative, and look like uh, they are on the other offensive or rather the opponent side. We need to work together and work together in this to be able to achieve as a, as a nation together. Well, thank you so much for that insightful conversation, Ken. I really appreciate it. Now, if you're a creative and you want to join the movement, you can find Ken on Ken Kigunda at uh, that's on Twitter. Have I got that right? Or and Ken Har Ken K Harrison on Instagram. That, have I got that right, Ken? Yes, you can also follow us at Freedom Ke on Twitter and again on Facebook Freedom of Expression. And we can touch bases and see how as creative we can grow together and bring change in the country. Mm -hmm. Well, Ken, I wish you all the best and I wish you good luck with the, what you're doing. It's such an amazing thing for the creative industry in Kenya and I wish you all the best of luck. Well, that is Ken right there. We just had a conversation on whether there is freedom of expression in Kenya. Remember, we don't end the conversation right here. You can share your thoughts and views on our social media platforms at Metropole TV KE. As for now, we end the show here. Thank you so much for joining me. Enjoy the rest of your viewing. <laughs>